Thanks for tuning into our podcast. I refuse to say the name out loud. This is Dion. And this is Anniki. Our podcast is two degenerate furries who happen to live together, turning their normal rants and trailing off into a premiere listening experience about design. Content! For the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare for some spicy hot takes and some absolutely Antarctic ones. We hope you enjoy our general sense of laxness and crust. We're doing this all pretty much spur of the moment and there's gonna be some mess. Some mess. A lot of mess. <laughs> Art. <laughs> what is fart? <laughs> <laughs> what is fart? <laughs> the world may never know. But yeah, art for me is the only language I can speak properly, as this podcast has been like direct proof of. <laughs> I mean, hell, if I don't make it a script and write it down first, then I can't fucking talk either. Understandable. It's uh, creation, the creation of the mind. <laughs> to me art is any kind of creativity whether it be a physical one or a visual one or an auditorial one if you are acting and expressing any kind of anything upon the world with an intent to create it specifically yeah then it's art if you are <laughs> specifically not trying to express something then it's not art like y if you record somebody picking up trash on the side of the road that's not art per se but you know the thing that's a pain in the ass is you also just can't say what is or isn't <laughs> i i think if it's like you did not really transform something but like you you just captured something with a tool like you made a measurement when you record somebody that's all you do that's like saying like chicken at 146 degrees that's art but if somebody's really passionate about chicken at 146 degrees like white people are <laughs> is it not <laughs> undercooked <art>? slightly <laughs> undercooked chicken no seasoning <laughs> All right, the transformative societal concept from a perspective <laughs> of expression. That's art. We can do this all night. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the artistic process goes, I suppose instead of trying to put some sort of definition on art, it'd be more better for a podcast, maybe, <laughs> to talk about artistic process. <laughs> All right, yes, that's very much true. But for posterity, I want to look up and, and read the literal definition of art. Oh, God. <laughs> Let's see. Google. Define art. The expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in visual forms such as a painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. You and Google think the same way, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like YouTube. I was like, there's a video of a cat, and the person that made it really liked the cat. <laughs> I mean, it's art when you start transforming it yeah. if you do anything to that video if you cut it if you color correct it if you try to like angle it in a certain specific Perhaps way even posting it can be depends on how you post it we could do this all night <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> how I'm just that asshole who has to be like let's be black and white about this <laughs> it all blurs in the end but yeah how, how do you get your juices flowing artistically or sexually <laughs> depends on how artsy you get with the sex i suppose all right well <laughs> uh in that case uh i sit on the internet for days at a time alone uh and i think about how much i haven't spent time with other people before i explain my artistic process i would like to express the way i think it probably would be better for other people to do it because i don't recommend my process to other people oh no <laughs> no, 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 not mine either. No. Yeah. Drink some water, be healthy, take breaks, do not listen to whatever the hell we're about to say about our own artistic processes, please. <laughs> because uh, I watch YouTube videos until I feel enough pressure to do something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I used to feel that way because I'm, I used to watch a lot of 
of Let's Players, like when Let's Playing really started in like 2011. Yeah. So I used to watch uh, Tobuscus, who has now been canceled because he's racist. I used to watch Markiplier, who is still uh, golden and good. Thank God, at least we have Markiplier. Game Grumps. Game Grumps, yeah. Was originally John and Which, Aaron. Yeah, <laughs> I, I watched that when it started, and uh, John Jafari, same problem. Like, <laughs> oops. Uh-oh, stinky. <laughs> so I, I started as just watching people enjoy things that other people created. That's what Let's Plays are, is it's it's kind of like a museum walkthrough. And yeah. you're just someone's just walking you through a museum and they're experiencing it as uh as they go. And I think one of the reasons that horror let's plays were so prominent is because people who did not know how to act yet in front of a live audience, people who were just recording themselves doing something, they were more expressive and genuine when they were scared. Yeah. <laughs> so watching Markiplier run through uh, Amnesia the Dark Descent way, way back in the day on his first channel or what? I don't even remember if Amnesia was on his first channel. But uh, regardless, watching him play five Nights at Freddy's many years later, watching him uh, simp for Lady Dimitrescu on Resident Evil 8 news recently. <laughs> like, it's it's just been one long horror journey with him. All of the small, like, indie games he played and stuff like that, or made an RPG maker, I love those. And so just watching him do what I've always done, is play video games and enjoy them, and then, like, present it in a way where mm -hmm. it's like, you can see how much someone is genuinely Genuinely enjoying that experience. Yeah. I, I've enjoyed a lot of his Let's Play stuff in the past, but last year with Una's Honest, it clicked with me in like the exact right moment. Like I was starting to get a bit artsy fartsy. And then you were like, hey, check out this thing Markiplier's doing. And I was like, ooh. And then it just got more and more interesting as it went on. Yeah. The <laughs> fact that Unus Honest was made completely within like artistic limitations, like really strictly defined artistic limitations, especially the time frame, oh, which, yeah. which never do that to yourself ever. Yeah. <laughs> never work as hard as they did on Unus. Don't do that. Please <laughs> take time to make sure you are feeling healthy because the amount of justification and mental gymnastics you have to do to work harder than you should is uh oh, it's a lot <laughs> yeah and this goes in a professional setting too like you will always be pushed more in a creative position by we'll call them the entrepreneurship don't feel compelled to create on an absurd level don't feel compelled to be like i want people to experience this and pour your entire soul into it and then two to four years later you've been working you know, 50 hour work weeks and you are drained. And the only thing that people will have seen is this one thing you made. Like, no, publish your art like as you go. Have like a side project area. Yeah. Don't work for anybody who wants to take your creative expression and drink it dry. And while I can definitely understand, especially from a personal place, like being passionate about something enough to, you know, work as hard as you can on it. But at the same time, you have to make sure you're keeping up with your health. It is probably the most important part. And when you neglect it, you feel it. <laughs> yeah, if you are not living life then your life is gonna be affected yeah <laughs> it's stupid and direct and roundabout as that sounds yeah just you exist on this earth to presumably enjoy your time here this is what i think this year is gonna be about for me because last year was bad everyone knows that i don't have to fucking specify but uh i did not take very healthy precautions and even just like socializing maybe once or twice a week which is certainly at least a bare minimum has improved my life a lot because I wasn't doing that before, and it was just me in my head doing my art, not getting very much done, and hating all of it. <laughs> there was a, a video that I worked on for this channel that I worked on for 16 hours straight. Did not sleep, did not do anything else, 16 hours straight, in a sweaty, cramped office with my headphones on. And I got an ear infection that was so bad because I just sat there. God, you were out for like a week. Yeah, I was. 
And then you know what wasn't happening that entire week? I wasn't creating anything either. So it's just, it's self-defeating when you push yourself that Oh, yeah. Hard. That is something that I also noticed is uh, if you crash, avoid that at all costs because... Crashing will take at least twice the amount of time to recover from than just taking breaks would originally. Yeah. You will kill your productivity if you're constantly crashing. Now, you can push yourself if you feel comfortable. That's something I want to specify too because I spent a lot of time not pushing myself the way I like to because I was like, oh, well, I got to be healthy about it. There's extremes for both. You can do nothing out of fear of breaking yourself, but you can also do too much out of fear of not doing enough. You're always going to make mistakes, but don't be afraid to like know your limits. Learn where they're at. Yeah. You know, where is pushing myself too hard? When do I take this break? You might not know because you don't have the experience of trying that. Yeah. If you just crash your head into the wall over and over again, or if you don't create, then those are the two extremes. You got to find where your middle ground is, and that's just trial and error until you get it right and rememorize it. Yeah, don't find the balance, find your balance. Yes. One thing that America's like mental health system really needs to learn is a more individualized basis of thinking, which is like, okay, this person is this way, so their mind works this way. Because if you go in and you're like, I'm full of anxiety, they're like, oh, well, this is what helps anxious people. Yeah. So you got to find your balance. Otherwise, you will throw yourself off. Trust um, yourself to find it. <laughs> something I learned in therapy is that they will teach you all of the coping mechanisms they know, but they will tell you that because only some of them work and they need to try all of them. Yeah. <laughs> they don't go based on like who you are and the things you think and the things that would work for you. They're just throwing things at the wall. <laughs> and yeah, and hoping it sticks because realistically, all of us, that's all we can really hope to do. And do not take that from the depressing standpoint of like, that's it? Like, no, realistically, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. You got to do what you got to do and you got to do it healthy. But now that we did that, my process sucks. <laughs> I'm still yeah. refining it right now. I'm, I'm not as productive as I'd like to be, quote unquote, by my own standards, not by like, I feel like I could refine it better to do more rather than holding that against myself. I'm optimizing things still. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still on the level where logically I know what I could do to completely optimize my schedule. I could give myself literally a day of the week I do this, then the next day you do this because it, it's Tuesday, Wednesday you do this. Thursday, you do this. I could break up all of my interests that way and give them time slots and do that, but it's not exactly going to work out and then I'm going to feel dejected about doing it. So I'm stuck in that knowing my limit and then kind of trying to tease myself into a routine before <laughs> I commit to a schedule. God, I feel that. <laughs> it is tough, but I think I'm slowly starting to figure out a schedule again. Very slowly. I'm at least figuring out that I can work really hard after a couple days off. So I gotta take a couple days off and I can ride that momentum and I gotta figure out when the next couple of days off are because I got to make sure I get enough done to where those days off aren't spent in like anxiety about what I haven't gotten done which you know I can have a bit of control over that but at the same time if I just like got the amount done I wanted before those days off it's a flow I'm feeling the flow of it I just haven't gotten quite into it yet yeah for me it's I uh now have so many plans that I'm stuck on which one to pick. And so I keep doing a small amount of like two or three of them a day. It's not really leveling out and getting something done. And for that reason, I diminish the amount of work that I'm actually doing in my head. I'm like, oh, you're, you haven't actually made strides on that one project. You have not focused. Well, I don't need to. Yeah, I've noticed you beating yourself up a little bit jokingly about like not having made a review in five months because those are the specific words you use every time. Uh -huh. But like, how many YouTubers do we watch where they just like disappear for a few months and it's like, sorry guys, I'm back and I'm going to be better 
better than ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. And then it's always true. Yeah. You know, they improved. They figured out their process for a while. And then they got back to, you know, a, a routine. And you just do that cycle every once in a while. Yeah. Everything repeats. Everything is cycle. Looping forever and ever. And that's how a drill works. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta ride the spiral. Shit, was that all we had on our artistic <laughs> process? Uh, part two. <laughs> Fuck. We, I knew last episode we ended with me saying, maybe we'll get some structure. <laughs> maybe we can make like a list. <laughs> the thing is, I kept making lists. And <laughs> you know what? I just realized we're still talking about the artistic process. God damn it. <laughs> Last time I made lists and we didn't use them. And so that discouraged us from using a list this time. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, trying to figure out how it works with yourself is such a pain in the ass. You Just gotta... follow through. Follow through. If you tell yourself you're going to do something, follow through. Yeah. I'm getting into that vibe a little bit more lately. I'm finding the ability... The strength to combat the side of me that's like, no, just watch like two more Germa streams. <laughs> <laughs> it's not always bad to even do that, especially because that's having a break. Yeah. It might not have been a scheduled break, but it's the break that you needed. Yeah. But at the same time, I've noticed that strength coming back where I can be like, okay, I know I need to draw. And being able to actually break myself away and do that, which has been nice. When you finally get that groove, it almost doesn't hurt. Like, it almost feels like it does normally. <laughs> yeah. You don't take the psychic damage. <laughs> yeah. that That's the weird part is that it does feel like it hurts. That's hard to, like quantify on why exactly you're riding against the wave of yourself however you're feeling and that's tough in certain contexts for sure the key is like trying to figure out how you can make you a hundred percent into something like that and that's hard yeah, I guess it just depends on your wavelength at the time. Yeah, if our brains were even remotely reliable, <laughs> maybe we could have a steady one. <laughs> like, uh, okay, I figured it out. I'm good. <laughs> But that's a good point, though. Like, our brains aren't reliable because they n were never meant to have to be. They were always meant to, like, adapt. Yeah. So if you beat yourself up for not being a machine of perfect order and being super reliable, well, like, inherently, that's not in your nature. It's not in anyone's nature. Yeah. Capitalism has weaponized ourselves against ourselves. Yes. Not exactly what I was getting at, but... That became my angry takeaway. <laughs> Thankfully, I've moved from politics to, like like armchair philosophy <laughs> but i haven't been as oh you mentioned something well capitalism's bad because <laughs> i mean at this point we all know yeah no we don't have to wiggle our fingers at everything and that, i think that's all i meant oh <sighs> living life like that is too exhausting i am starting to realize that now we're nuanced enough to be able to address acknowledge the things that are in our way and stop us but do what we can with what we can despite it i'm not gonna be overthrowing capitalism my, with my bare hands as much as i'd like to right but i am going to be drawing lots of fucking porn the rest of my life because i enjoy it <laughs> and if that's not a metaphor for that exact thing anyway <laughs> but that doesn't mean i'm gonna be complacent either you can be more nuanced than that yes I keep trying to take the nuance out of everything you say. <laughs> but, I mean, playing devil's advocate is just really proving your point. <laughs> It'd be like that sometime. Go back, I want to be monkey! <laughs> All these other podcast episodes where we're like, uh, what do we talk about? How do we say this thing that we want to say? And then this episode, we're like, monkey, monkey, please give us the monkey back! <laughs> <laughs> you know what would be incredible the moment we're all just making money i'm gonna take the fattest longest maybe like year long vacation 
Oh, man. <laughs> okay, it wouldn't be a year long because I'd get like a month in and I'd be like, oh, God, I gotta create something. <laughs> <laughs> I spent like, what, a month with my parents and by week three, I was binge watching Blender tutorial videos <laughs> on their TV. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly how I picture any vacation I ever take in the future. I haven't taken one since high school. <laughs> but uh, I picture just like poolside, high off my ass, just just living it up and then like week two okay when are we going home when are we doing something i have to film this so it's content <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, as much as we, like, say, don't, you know, live that obsessive life where you can't take a break, I think also tugging on the other end of that rope is the side of us inside that's like, okay, I love creating, though. <laughs> yeah. It is a war with yourself constantly. Unless you decide to work together. Yeah. I feel like I have to clarify something. I have discussed this with you several times because you live with me. <laughs> but for our podcast viewers, who obviously know that we are very, like, pro-quarantine, yeah. right? I did go visit my parents. I took a shower the morning before I left, wore gloves and a mask to the airport, didn't touch a goddamn thing, kept to myself, and I took a shower the second I got to my parents' house. So it was trying to be as absolutely safe as possible and that's the one time i've left the house this year yeah i mean you quarantined like before and after for two weeks yeah you did you did it safe so i just wanted to clarify that yeah i understand i was about to say something about how i miss being social but i think vr chat is taking that over for me <laughs> I used to feel the same way, like, why don't I have friends in real life, you know? And then I realized, well, I do. We just have to fucking use tools to talk to each other. Yeah. I know that if I was in person with most of those friends, we'd hang out exactly the same as we do online. Yeah. And I know that from experience, from having friends that I used to have at school or at work and talking to them online, it's like fucking nothing changed. There are certain people that's not going to be the case with, but like one or two of them. Yeah, I, uh, as much as like physical contact with friends is nice, that sounded hornier than I meant it to. <laughs> like in-person contact. <laughs> Being able to hug somebody or give them a high five or a handshake, yeah. Like physical contact is important. Yeah, that is true. Contact in person with friends is very important for the brain, I would think. But it's a tough time. You gotta do what you gotta do. I am really thankful that in, what, 20, 2018, we went to see an NSP concert. Yeah. And that was, like, one of the most recent times, two years ago, <laughs> that I can look back on. All of us got to hang out for, like, a really long time and do something super fulfilling. Yeah. And we're all super hyped about it and on each other's shoulders and, like, hoorah. Kind of yeah, thing. I miss that kind of thing. That's, I think that was the last one I had as, as well. You know what? Speaking of things like this, like contact and the artistic process, someday when I have the time and maybe the money, I really want to like work on something with a group. Yeah. Collaborate. But finding the specific like group of maybe like, I don't know, five people that I could work with and know I could work with each and every one of them, I would have to find that because I don't tolerate people I can't work with. <laughs> that's That's been my life goal. My life goal has been trying to do that. From a very young age, I decided I wanted to be a game developer. And the idea of working with some friends on a project, that sounds fucking awesome that's like building a treehouse in your backyard it's so cool yeah the problem there is uh if it was like anyone in the community i would want to be able to pay them definitely want to be able to pay friends also hell yeah but like god i can't even pay for myself right now <laughs> yeah that's just that's just the way it is i've been watching like documentary stuff and then there was that gurren login video we watched like twice in the last week where they're talking about gynex and how they all just f so fluidly work together i would love because like oh, you and i yeah. i think could almost do that but i don't know of anyone in particular that i've worked with that i feel like i can work you know with. what because of the whole stigma of co-workers and working at a job, I completely forgot that that kind of camaraderie is exactly what they have. And now I'm really jealous. <laughs> That's awesome, though. Like, those people are, like, making stories that are inspiring people who are just like us going through shit that they did 
to get to where they're at. And that screams, you can do it to me. It's so good. It's exactly who I want to be. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, shout out to Bread Sword and his Gurren Logan and getting it video. I don't think I don't think you would mind the shout out on that. No, absolutely it's not. It's an amazing video, amazing channel. And watch Gurren Logan first before you watch that video because uh, major spoilers. But it is like the first review kind of. It's not a review, but like analysis. video. Yeah, analysis that has the spirit of the thing. It's an analyzing in it, and that's so incredible from a creative standpoint. <laughs> I. I I try to do that with my reviews, but man, he really nails it. Yeah. I think we've talked about Thor High Heels at least once before, but that FromSoft video was 110% like up his alley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are some things I disagree with Thor High Heels on. I still think that technical problems are not always artistic intention <laughs> and taking them as that way is a little bit, I don't know, kind of <laughs> presumptuous. Yeah. I can see what you mean, but also so looking at it from that perspective is interesting for me, at least. That's what I take away from it is, well, would this be good if I did it intentionally? <laughs> yeah, I guess I can see that. But I think I just always looked at it from the angle of, you don't need to give people who are growing an excuse for their things to be good. Yeah. You know, their things are just good if they're good. If they have weaknesses, that's fine. That's how people are. Yeah, I can understand where you're coming from on that. Wow, I thought this was going to be a way, like, bigger, well to draw from to be honest you keep you say that like we haven't like just been really passionate about this <laughs> we just know what we want to say unlike every other episode where it's been like well what, how do we how do we invent a new way to talk about this concept <laughs> well the last ones have felt a more flow with it somehow because i didn't look down at the clock and it was like 34 minutes in <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I keep glancing at it. I looked at it when it was like 19 minutes. But I think I keep running into like a bump and then it's like, okay, well, oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> also, I realized we just man behind the curtain to our audience. <laughs> I think I did it last time also. <laughs> I think I might have done that in two episodes, actually. I think I mentioned the time. I don't I don't think we've done it as heavily as we're doing it right this second. Oh, now I'm going to do it every episode now that I'm realizing that it's an accidental <laughs> running gag. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm just going to, like, forget for one episode, and at the very end, oh, the time is... <laughs> <laughs> and people look down, and the actual video time, it's not even close. <laughs> Today's date is, um... <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Good don't thing. do that one! <laughs> Good thing we haven't done that on the, any of the other ones. At least I don't think we have. Oh, uh, I guess you can cut this out if you don't want to do this today. But I have been thinking about a segment where we go back and address something from a previous oh, episode. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. Because uh, it would be a small little rant. We need to talk about how the moment we released the Nintendo video, they did like five things to piss people off almost immediately yes. afterwards. <laughs> Holy sh <laughs> Nikes. Yeah, there was that Smash thing. Immediately after that. Yeah, and the Mario All-Stars release, like, within a couple weeks of each other. <laughs> yeah, there just, there were there were more things than that even, but I don't remember what they are. I think Splatoon had a brief thing. Yes, it was the Smash community and the Splatoon community because of the, uh, the online, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were using the modded online. That sucks. I mean, that really just proves our point, though. Something Vinny from Vine Sauce says all the time is like when Nintendo gets complacent, they start to make mistakes. Yeah, they've been pretty complacent lately. Complacent. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, I... <laughs> We broke that joke up real fast. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Come. Please. <laughs> <laughs> now it sounds like a, like an insult. Like you're complacent. <laughs> it's I'm not even gonna sound like the same fucking word. I meant to say it as like a sexual cum, and then you're looking down on them with your boot on their shoulder. <laughs> cum, you placent. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, this joke's not funny. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I remember when I hated last episode. 
<laughs> At least this episode is like rolling. Yeah. Let's see, I know I had something else about Nintendo. I always got something about Nintendo. I am so sorry. I'm always that. I'm, I don't actually comment on anything ever, but spiritually speaking, I am definitely that bitch that is like the first comment of any Nintendo post that's like, um, actually, Nintendo DMCA'd this project, so you shouldn't simp for them. <laughs> yeah. And as much as I hate like Nintendo fanboys and then anti Nintendo bitches that are like instantly in the comments because it's a war between the two. I know which side I sit on. <laughs> <sighs> I think the obsessive part about it is kind of where the line is to me. You know, you can have an opinion, just don't like have your opinion at people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> I have my opinion, so you have to also. <laughs> yeah, that's gross. I've done it, but it's gross. <laughs> let people enjoy things, but don't let companies get away with bad things either. Yes. God, that was really quiet. <laughs> when I normalize this and then compress it, it will all sound the same. Normalize compression. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, this, this podcast fucking sucks. <laughs> Watch, it'll be our most popular one. It fucking will. <laughs> Did we just think the same thing at the same time? <laughs> uh, come, Preston. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Fucking Christ. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, is anyone anyone still out there? Anyone still listening? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> the theater's just empty. <laughs> uh, at least we don't gotta deal with comments on this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's content. <laughs> So how's your day going, commenter? <laughs> the, the one person still listening? Yeah, if you're still listening, tell us about your day, actually. Podcasts don't have enough, like, interactivity. While you're just in the, in the grocery store or at work or something, if you're listening to this, how's your day going? Yeah. Pretend you're, like, on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's per- Yeah! <laughs> Should we do, like, the answering machine thing? Like, mm-hmm. Oh, yeah? I thought the same thing. I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you. Oh, that fucking sucks. Yeah, I hate it when they do that. <laughs> They're talking about our podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I fucking hate it when we do this too. <laughs> oh, what are we, Blues Clues? <laughs> uh, I think it's really fitting that in the episode when we talk about the artistic process, we <laughs> literally bullshit. <laughs> We're fucking breaking down our podcast in real time. <laughs> And that's the funniest thing to us. <laughs> Been watching too much Germa. This is fucking cursed ger Germa podcast. Germa podcast. Podcast where we mention a whole bunch of other podcasts and creators podcast. <laughs> We're going to get Germa chat in the comments. Oh, please no. <laughs> Why is this guy still recording? <laughs> <laughs> Fake podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> They're faking it. <laughs> uh, now, don't make me come down there into the comments, because I will. I'll do it. <laughs> he'll, he'll come. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So that's how we're going to do this. <laughs> oh. Watch, like, this last part of the podcast be like the funniest part and we weeded out like everyone it's gonna be like one person in the future is like you guys didn't fucking watch episode four it was the best one you couldn't get through the part where they were talking to you like it was a phone call what about the germa chat references 
come on, man. <laughs> like, it's gold. Why wouldn't you watch Germa chat references and not just Germa? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, that one person will be your friend. <laughs> we love you because you're our only fan. <laughs> Subscribe to my only fans. <laughs> that has been a fucking temptation, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Also because artistic eroticism is kind of our shtick. Yeah. It'd be easy money. I, I don't know. Actually, I'm not subscribed to it. I don't have an account or anything, so I don't know how it like works. I assume it's kind of Patreon-y where you just like, you upload something and you get money. <laughs> yeah, like people like subscribe to you and over the course of time, they get so many posts or whatever. Yeah. Probably like private shows or private feet pics or whatever it is. Uh, private pictures of somebody's knife collection because I think that's what that site was originally for. What do you think the next meme fetish is going to be? Because I think feet are on the way out. I think Vore is on the way out also. Was Vore in for a while? It was like kind of slightly. There was like some meme jokes about it. Oh yeah, like a couple months ago. <laughs> yeah, I think feet's feet had some staying power, <laughs> but I feel like feet is on the way out too. I think a picture of Lugosi from B Stars boring Haru in the original image, and I think someone like photoshopped it to have like a giant sandwich instead, and it just was like captioned like mm, hamburger or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm, hamburger. And I think I saw that. On like, uh, I don't want to name drop him because if I'm wrong, that's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> a but, friend, I suppose. <laughs> not a friend, another content creator. But I think I saw it on his Twitter and I was just like, why has this stream been crossed? <laughs> like, these two things that I like have nothing to do with each other. Because apparently I like Lagos eating hamburgers, but... I mean, if he's hungry and he needs a hamburger, give that boy a hamburger. I just think it's really funny. Like, like with the feet thing, I just think it's really funny I, I swear to god i'm not in defeat it's just really funny look man <laughs> if you take your socks off and i start laughing i'm not turned on <laughs> I, I swear <laughs> uh it always turns into this every, every time it always turns into this. <laughs> you're always the one that brings it up <laughs> <laughs> because i'm so upset that people think that i i want to change your mind i i don't okay real talk i don't actually think you're in defeat but god is like pushing it fucking hilarious <laughs> see that makes me want to do it more because now that's funny <laughs> we broke down another fucking joke <laughs> oh we're fucking stupid <laughs> why does anybody listen to this crap <laughs> take a fucking sip babes get a get a water if you're listening to this get a water be hydrated. Yeah, be hydrated. We both just realized we were thirsty at the same time. <laughs> this has been a hydration break. <laughs> H2O. Oh, I, that's something I've been kind of considering. I would want to like write some down or something beforehand, but I really want to do fake sponsors. <laughs> Can it always be like something positive? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Stretching. Brought to you by. <laughs> do like fake actual sponsors. Like brought to you by Raycon earbuds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> except we're not. We would love to be, probably, be, but, but no. <laughs> I, I want to meet the Raycon, like, scouting employee that's like, you know this furry podcast with, like, <laughs> 50 views? <laughs> Gotta get him fucking sponsor. <laughs> Give those guys some earbuds. They know about audio, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your audio is better than anything else that, like, anyone around your level is doing, for sure. I right, hopefully. The fact that you even, like, thought about it with streaming it is already a step ahead of the competition. <laughs> I guess that's true. Uh, there's a lot of streamers that do not have good audio to this day. Like, we were watching that Germa joke where he, like, turns the quality of his camera, like, way down. He's, he's like, watching a Let's Play of, like, Fear 2 of himself, I think. <laughs> and then he, like, compresses it more. God. And it's just like, yeah, but your audio is not great either. But I mean, we're not going to fucking criticize the shit out of fucking. Well, I think he was using, I think he switched to the webcam mic at that point. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm full of shit anyway. <laughs> we're all full of shit. That's, that's the magic game. That's the world. We want people to do better. Isn't that weird how that comes out? Are we too high? <laughs> no. <laughs>
<laughs> hmm, is there anything else I've wanted to address from past podcasts? Oh, well, besides, like, I'm sorry about my speech patterns <laughs> because that's all I think about every time is like, mm. but like, I'm not also beating myself up about it. It's just one of those things that in the moment I'm like, mm, while listening. <laughs> I know that I can be super opinionated and it comes off as like really harsh. Mm, I like your opinion. That's why we, we started a podcast <laughs> together. <laughs> but for the listeners, <laughs> the poor listeners, <laughs> the poor listeners subjected to my opinion. Opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Those plebeians. <laughs> I don't mean that we created this podcast to educate the masses. <laughs> <laughs> the look you gave me. <laughs> oh, you can't see the look on my face, but I am so angry. <laughs> I am so mad. You <laughs> dared to say that. <laughs> why does it feel like such a call out? And why does it feel right? And why do I hate you? <laughs> because we're being smart asses about it. <laughs> uh, uh, see, people, it's all a cycle. And if you're up your own ass enough, you can tell other people to be up their own ass. And then everyone's up their own ass and we're all just having big ass parties. Don't do that. That sounds horrible. Invite me if you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no! <laughs> what did I just decline myself of? Ass party. Come, pressure. Come, pressure. <laughs> pressure actually sounds like a name. It almost sounds like a really old, like, racial term. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Like a European term. Ew. <laughs> Ew, Euro. Euro. <laughs> <laughs> well, there goes that audience. <laughs> now that we've alienated everybody but ourselves, <laughs> let's talk about our deepest, darkest secrets and well, regrets. You know what? We'll be the only ones listening to this part when we're listening back. <laughs> This is the part of the podcast where we speak to ourselves. <laughs> As opposed to all of the other parts of the podcast. Where we talk to each other. I'm lost now. <laughs> Anyone listening and future me, get some water and feel... People are going to have to pee so bad after this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Why was that your go-to? Remember, people, for the third time, go get a drink. <laughs> Even I listening back to this and be like, oh, another drink reminder, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Has it ever occurred to you that we're suddenly really bad at this? <laughs> <laughs> suddenly? <laughs> uh, I just think we're getting really good at being really bad at this. <laughs> you see, if you do it ironically, then obviously you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Don't at me, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Yeah. <laughs> you see, if you're full of shit, then <laughs> I love the thought went right out the window. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Is this the end of the podcast? <laughs> Do you want it to be? Um, uh, can you think of anything else you want to say? This has been the worst podcast episode. <laughs> ever. Should we air this one? No, I kind of like it. <laughs> We're actively talking about getting rid of it. Uh, you you decide in the comments below. Did you like this podcast? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell notification. Or whatever the fuck YouTubers say. <laughs> That might be a good ending. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, but I kind of wanted to talk more. Okay. I don't know what about. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that's kind of what our podcast is about, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, do you feel pressured when the microphone is there? Uh, we're, this, we're recording this, but <laughs> a little less. I feel. I, I genuinely actually kind of like this episode so far because uh, instead of being tense about all of the bullshit we've been talking about i'm leaning into it <laughs> and it's bad but i'm having fun <laughs> yeah we're having fun so it's your problem now <laughs> <laughs> we all just want to enjoy life why are you judging us <laughs> are you talking to me or the listener <laughs> Talking to the listener. <laughs> How are you?
you doing, listener? Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna need two hands to count the amount of times like we can like lose listeners in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's been, I, it's been a while, little while since we heard from you listeners. <laughs> I can't wait for people to be like you were right really shitty episode <laughs> <laughs> oh but it feels good to have one of those you know <laughs> you know what we would only be able to do it once yep <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a learning experience no <laughs> oh. Not only that, it'll be one of those things you can point at and say, I did that on purpose. <laughs> Listen to this one, it fucking sucks. <laughs> Isn't it great? I did it on purpose. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be nice to literally tweet that instead of like, Tweeting it like, oh god, please don't listen. It's not good. I don't like it. It'll be <laughs> fucking do it. It sucks. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. This podcast episode. Why are we so self aware? Why are we? Why are we so smart? Am I right? yeah. Oh genius. Because we're being ironic about it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Did, did you? Are you here for the entire hour of us jerking ourselves off? <laughs> Tell us in the comments below where you stopped listening. <laughs> I stopped listening about 15 minutes. <laughs> then how the fuck did you know to comment that? You saw. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking liar. I can't, I can't even finish a sentence without Why laughing. Why am I no. still making this internet? Why am I talking to the viewer? Because uh, now it's a joke. Yeah. That we've established that we are talking to the viewers, so we keep having to do it. Maybe people will like it. Maybe it's like this new interactive podcast <laughs> experience. <gasps> not not in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm blanking on talk subjects. It is weird. This is like the first one where it wasn't super spontaneous. Well, I guess the last few ones, we had like a week to think about it. We didn't make a subject for this. I, I, I think I, I do have one more thing I want to ask about, like, the artistic process is, like, what actually is your inspiration? Like, moment to moment. Oh, that's a good one. For me, it is I want to create things that have the essence of me, I suppose, in a way, in a I hope it helps kind of way, <laughs> but also in a with, directly with a horny kind of way with my hornier art, but like things that have story and like where I can put more of myself in it. Uh, that is my intention generally is like, here's a lesson I learned. I want to present it in a way that you go through with the characters. So what's something you've seen recently beyond just uh, like the bread sword video that you've looked looked at and been like, this makes me want to make something. Anything I've been studying from Suda51, because I've been doing, uh, we, we played No More Heroes a little bit, but I've also been reading 25th Ward and I guess playing quote unquote 25th Ward, but it would be so easy to make a visual novel, looking at that, seeing how it's done, it's almost instantly just knowing how it's done and then being like, oh, I could do something kind of similar to that. And I mean, I was thinking about doing visual novel or like visual, like online interaction comic kind of things before I started studying Suda51. But seeing how like Grasshopper Studios did this extremely professionally, yet if I took the time, I could do something very similar of my own. As long as like whatever you're trying to emulate, like whatever vibe you're trying to go for is very much intentional, then no matter what like your skill level is, as long as like you're self-aware of it, it will turn out all right. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for, because I want to start working on side projects more, especially this year. I was thinking about that a little bit today, but I don't got time to do it today. <laughs> I definitely want to make more. I'm going to do more this year. I'm going to make it fucking work. And hopefully by the end of the year, I will have like a more regular income and a more regular free time. The direction I want to take the YouTube channel in is ultimately, I want to be more positive. I feel like one of the first... If I think it is the first video on the channel, the Borderlands review, is like a negative. It's, it's coming from a perspective where it's like, I don't understand this game. I don't understand why people like this. And I don't want to egg on shit. 
you rather take things that you enjoy, know why you enjoy, and then present it like, here, enjoy. <laughs> yes, exactly. So I have a couple reviews written. I think they're on the Patreon uh, in text form. They're like super negative opinions where it's like, why isn't this more like this? And it's a perspective that I think people would agree with, but I also don't want to alienate like the people who like that thing. Yeah. Because I don't want it to come across as if I judge you for liking it in a different way because i don't yeah that's i think that's definitely a good way to come from i think it probably fits your style better also because i mean 2010s was just full of people doing that and now it's starting to move in a direction of well everyone's learning how to enjoy things again let's present how what we enjoy and that feels better yeah i would like to do something similar i, I guess that's something else i want to possibly start this year is youtube stuff myself because it would be definitely a side thing where i would not be be caring as much about the rate of progress on it more so i would just be creating something because i was like hey look at how smart i think i am in this analysis <laughs> <laughs> the videos that i have written out i've recorded the script for them i still want to make a video because i still have the opinion and i still want to present it to people but it's just it's not what i want to focus on going forward so i think these will probably be the last videos like that I, I know you can do that it'll feel much better i imagine presenting things that you are passionate about is certainly a better route to be able to be more passionate about your work unless you're just like really really angry about something which can also be kind of a fuel in and of itself <laughs> yeah if you if you want to feel angry about something i guess that's fine as long as like nobody takes it personally like what does it matter yeah i think your deus ex video is a good example of that because it's not like you were getting mad at deus ex no but you had a lot of anger I'm getting in mad because of the lessons that deus ex teaches yeah yeah you, you you had a lot of anger in that video, but you directed it in a very good way. I'm really proud of that video, especially because I legitimately went and backed all my facts up. I feel completely justified in saying in everything that I said in that video. Yeah, I know there's a couple of other ones, but if somebody were to like ask me about what do I think my favorite video on your channel is, the Deus Ex one would definitely be up there. I wanted the Death Stranding one to be quote unquote better, but I that's the only because I watched you struggle with the technical difficulties of that one and ooh, it took a long time to even get it to where it was <laughs> as far as like the way it was presented yeah i i want the death stranding one to be better also looking back on it like i, I recorded it with a cold <laughs> why did i do that <laughs> that um, was a wild week oh my god yeah i look at videos like the deus ex one and i look at videos like my gun griffin blaze one yeah that's definitely another one that's one of my faves i'm flabbergasted at how like different they both are but how they're both definitely me they're both definitely good and both definitely things that i want to do more of yeah so it's not that i never want to be emotional on the channel again it's the exact opposite of that yeah you know i just i just don't want to be negatively emotional i feel like the deus ex one is it's, it's supposed to be a positive message at the end. I'm angry and we need to do something about this. Yeah, that does make a lot of sense. You feeling good about, you know, bringing out more positive messages. That's very good and very helpful and a very good direction to go in. I can see what you mean by the toxicity of, oh, here's this thing. This thing as a whole is bad because XXXX reason. Yeah, I think that's how you get people just being angry at others instead of at the thing and then doing something about the thing. Yeah. Maybe you think that's by taking it out on others you're wrong the thing about thinking about things is you can always do it more nuanced if you want if you want if you want for your health uh-huh <laughs> genuinely think i'm gonna really like this podcast yeah i think i'm gonna love this podcast episode and then hate it and then love it and then hate it as the cycle goes around because i'm at i'm at i'm at peak gremlin part of the cycle yeah i feel you 100 percent. being a gremlin is just defiance i suppose yeah and i i think that people are kind of in general vibing with this part of the wave and i, I think people will get it get angry this has been gurren logan and getting <laughs> <laughs> this has been us being inspired by gurren logan and getting it yeah watch gurren logan yeah start there or Evangelion. Depends on where in the cycle you're at. Yeah. <laughs> the cycle is just Evangelion Garden Logan. Over and over and over and over and over again. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the amount of work you're going to have ahead of you in this podcast. You know what's funny? I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to end this podcast. Yeah. <laughs>